What's up, y'all? Rise and shine. Back at it once again, hunting for parts for junkyarddogs.com. So, uh, we're at the Long Beach Auto Swap uh, just to see what I could come up with. Now, there were some really good deals at Pomona. Um, Pomona tends to have like bigger, more crazy deals because people are coming from way further out. Um, this is a little bit more of a local swap meet. Yeah, a couple years ago, I tried to do my own swap meet. Um, if I was able to keep consistent, it actually would have did well. But, man, it's it's not an easy task, and it's very costly to start doing, you know what I mean? you got to rent fencing and hire staff and security and rent toilets or whatever. So, oh, shoot, early in the morning. Check this out. not even in the show. And that's just sitting in the parking lot. <laughs> it's crazy. It's real beat up, but he drives it though. It's tight. Alright, let's head inside here. Alright, we're in this piece. Look like they've changed a few things around as far as the arrangement. Look at that. If you got a shop and you do oil changes, boom. It's tight. $10 for five, five quart. Interesting. Might get one of those and get out of here. It's a $10 oil change. Pro Flow. And I went and picked up. It's a good place, guys, to get lines. Check it out. What your boys got here, look. Fittings on fittings on fittings. Wow. <laughs> Some hoes, right? And he gave me a fuel pressure regulator too. That's exactly what I was looking for. Bam, we out of there. Thank you, man, I really appreciate you. <laughs> hey, you wanna shout out your, your phone number or your email or something? 562-943-5552. Custom make lines, uh, brake, fuel, oil, nitrous, turbo, fuel, whatever you need. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Reassembly. Yeah, I know. He told me that. I might take you up on that, man. Thanks. All right. So here it is. I'm finally driving the notch. I had to do a lot of stuff, man, and it still seems like there's some other things I gotta do. Obviously, the alignment's way off still, but, um, dude, it, it broke down on me on the street, and uh, it, it had no spark. It was just turning and turning, and it turned out that it was uh, the TFI module, because it, 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 this, uh, this car has an aftermarket So check it out, we are back in the dog house and now we got something done. The intake is welded. So I hit up my homeboy, Sean, and uh, he's the only guy I knew who had a welder powerful enough uh, to weld this. So there it is. The intake has been welded. See, it's got all that welding in there, all those little plates that I Drawn up, he ran a bead all down here. Only thing is, I noticed that this bolt's really close, so I'm gonna have to shave 
off some of the supercharger here in order to get it to do what I want to do. But yeah, the intake's welded. You can see the inside here. Like I said, it got that smooth piece that goes right down in. And I honestly, he, he so he welded the inside. Let's see if I can get, show you guys. Let's see if I can get it. So he welded the inside here. And then once this is on, that means he'd have to stick his hand in to weld on this side, on this side, on the inside, which I find absolutely amazing. Shout out to Sean. I really appreciate him doing this. And he did it for an amazing price too. So if anybody needs any welding, hit me up. I got his contact. He does really difficult work. Cause this, this was really thick uh, to, you know, aluminum to weld. It's, it's quarter inch, man. You know, it's not like some thin 16 gauge, you know, aluminum. It's, it's thick. And uh, he was able to do it. He said he blew the breaker a few times in the shop welding it, but he got it done. Let's throw the superchargers on there and see how it fits. So, yeah, see? Down here, we have an issue. And it's hitting. All right? So, I practically have to shave off most of the uh, of the intake here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not an intake. Shave off some of the uh, the supercharger here on the tip. I knew this problem was going to happen, but I didn't know how severe. Um, but yeah, it's a little worse than I thought it was going to be. So yeah, it's really lifting it off. And that's not cool because that's not going to seal. Uh, but yeah, man, it was, it was, it was, uh, it's been done. All the little areas I was talking about, you know, it's all welded up. All welded up along the side here. Boom, boom, boom. You feel me? Yeah. So yeah, he welded right in here. You know. Now this pocket, he didn't weld in here because he was talking about how the just the heat was just so bad that it was starting to warp everything. As you can see right here, it's warped from the uh, from the gussets. So I might need to get this top part uh, flattened somehow. Um, I don't know how though. Maybe the machine shop? I don't know. But well, we're gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to figure that out somehow. But we're gonna figure it out though. Not a big deal. We came this far. <laughs> All right. Now we gotta get to this lower intake here. Gotta get it out. Cause this is not the right one. Even though it's a GT40, it's a non-EGR style, so I gotta take it off, unfortunately. Alright, I use these uh, studs which come from the uh, upper intake as guide bolts. Cause once you do all that gluing up, especially with those cork style um, gaskets, they move around, which generally is why people don't use them. But I use the glue to keep it in place. And then the studs to just make sure that the intake just drops down straight to where it's supposed to go. No moving around, no back and forth, no none of that. And as you guys know, or if you don't know, the two front bolts and the two back bolts on this intake always get seized into the head because water seeps into them. So you gotta put some sort of sealant on the threads. So boom, intake is now in. All of that was just to get this hole right here. I don't know if you can see it from there, but that's for the uh, ICT intake charge temperature sense, ICT. Intake charge temperature sensor. So Ford put it right here next to the number five to catch the air right before it enters the cylinder. So some guys will be like, ah, you could have put it in the uh, upper intake or whatever, but I didn't want to do that because I'm using that to kind of gauge how much fuel or to tell the computer how much fuel to dump into the, uh, into the intake manifold. So I didn't want to kind of short out there, you know what I mean? So uh, let's put the thermostat back on. 
and then uh, start figuring out what we're gonna do for the fuel rail. Also too, this gave me the opportunity to put on this side at the back there, um, I got to put one of those studded bolts. Um, that way I could use it as a ground, which I didn't have that there before. So now I do. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Got to correct some mistakes. But yeah, it looks so far, looks so far so good. Looks like everything went down the way it was supposed to. All right. Go. Cool. Let's go. Intake saw, thermostat, and the, the uh, coolant neck is back on. So now I'm going to install the coolant temperature sensor here. And this was the big culprit which caused me a problem, like I said before, was the, uh, the ACT here or the ICT. So I, uh, Amazon, which is really cool, man. Amazon sells um, ICT sensors and they sell oil temperature sensors for all sorts of vehicles. And what I like about these, shout out to Steve for this suggestion, they come with pigtails. See, so you can like wire them in to whatever you're, you're doing. You know what I'm saying? This is tight. I'm like, oh, you already got the wire and it came with it. See that white stuff you see me putting on there is thread sealant from Permatex. The reason why I use this is uh, basically it's liquid Teflon tape. So uh, to explain it in the simplest terms. Liquid Teflon tape. So it fills in the, the minuscule gaps, the minuscule gaps, so that water won't come out of here or air won't come out of this part here. So you see this one is the one from Amazon and this is the original Ford setup. So you can see it's a little bit more bulky. This one has like a nice weather pack connector and uh, it just looks a lot better. But we don't know if it works better just because it looks better. Let's go ahead and install this one. Liquid Teflon tape. Pretty much. Here we go. Brash. Cool. Man, all of that because I was missing this. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it's on there now. Woo! It will be worth it. So let's move on to the fuel rails and the, uh, the injectors. All right, so we got one fuel rail on this side. And I just, I remember thinking like with this block, like is it gonna hit the block? Like I can't remember me the valve covers, like a drum. Okay, doesn't hit over there. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so for the fuel system, um, and it's crazy, I just noticed that this has a return at the bottom here, um, which I'm probably gonna plug. I did not see that. I'm not super familiar with this, so if you guys could like maybe DM me, send me a message or something on junkyarddogs.com about how to run this fuel line. All I know is that I got, um, he explained to me, the guy who sold me these uh, uh, these AN fittings, it's a guy from um, ProFlow. So ProFlow guy sold me these, and he also sold me some black fuel line. I didn't want to go with the red, the red and blue ones that everybody else gets, cause well, I just think it looks kind of cheese, it's like, super cheese like I got a race car cheese ball kind of stuff so I got some of this fuel line and uh, he he put one of the lines on here for me to show me how to do it um, and it's actually pretty cool like uh, the way it goes on you, you cut this with a hacksaw and then uh, you screw you pretty much screw it on 
and then you tighten it. It's really tight. Like this is like a fantastic idea. Um, whoever came up with this, this is really dope. So basically you screw it on, you screw it on and then it tightens onto the hose. I don't know, leave some suggestions in the comments guys, uh, how to run this, how you think I should run this fuel system up here. I'm running factory lines, a regular 3 8 line from the back. Um, if I need more then I'll just, you know, put a hard line from the back to the front so I could run really high pressure. But that leads me to another episode. Let's go. I'm just uh, kind of going around some things today. So um, I actually started to fool around with the fuel pump and I noticed not only is it a little too big, um, it still fits in this uh, casing here, but I noticed it not only is it too big, it also has a different bottom. So check it out. This is AEM, so it is not a direct fit. See? And then the bottoms are different. So that's a problem. You can tell how long this one's been sitting with an empty tank. You see all the crust on here on the top. That's why this, this pump was bad um, in the notch before I swapped it. So this pump, I'm gonna have to do some modifications. I wanted to use this one because I found it at swap meet. So I wanna make stuff that's not supposed to work, work. I think it's uh, something incredibly satisfying about that. So I noticed the bottom here is, is different. So what I might end up doing is uh, cutting the bottom of this off and making sure that it doesn't go past this or it won't sit down in the tank properly. Um, because it comes out the way the normal pump goes. I have another another one here. The filter's all jacked up. But you can see. So it comes like that and then the filter come, protrudes at the bottom and that's it. That's it, it, do, it can't go any deeper than that. So the pump's gonna have to fit up in here. See, here's the hose that they gave me. They gave me a hose, see? So, uh, yeah, it's gonna have to fit somehow. I don't know, um, yeah, I might have to cut the hose just a little shorter. And then also, too, uh, I noticed that the wires uh, are different as well. Uh, the AEM, AEM setup comes with, uh, it comes with its own pigtail like everything else that I've had so far it comes with its own pigtail so uh, with that being said let the fabrication games begin so I don't know how I'm gonna do this I'm probably going to cuz see it's one piece that's folded maybe I could cut it and, uh, and make another bottom here out of steel maybe bolt it on or something Probably don't use bolts down there because it would scrape the pump. Interesting. This is gonna be fun. Oh yeah, we just getting started. <laughs> All right, y'all, so there you have it. Your boy Junkyard Dog in here getting it in. Got the new intake on, got the ICT sensor, we got the uh, coolant temperature sensor on, we got the fuel rails in. Now, those fuel rails might not be in this permanent position, but it's all good, it's just four bolts, take them out, and we're good to go. And the intake has been welded. So I'm real excited about that. It's grind time, I'm going hard this week. So uh, you might actually see a, a midweek episode because I'm like trying to knock some of this stuff out really quickly because I'm having some free time now, finally. You know, I have some projects going on on the other side of things that have been uh, taking up my time, so now it's slowing down. Um, I got my man's motor back here that I'm putting together, so I'm gonna finish that within the week. And I got an intake to ship out and an uh, Edelbrock throttle body to ship out. All right, so thank you. Thank you, thank you for everybody who's rocking with junkyarddogs.com. I appreciate it. Until next time, y'all, junkyard dogging. Woo!